Hey guys, welcome to Spinal Stability and Deep Core Musculature. In this video, we're going to talk about how do we stabilize our spine and the two structures that sit on either end of our spine, the top end being our rib cage and the bottom end being our pelvis. How do we stabilize those structures so that they don't move independently of one another? And what deep core muscles are actually working to stabilize those structures? So let's get started here on our back on the floor. And you can choose to be on a mat um, or just on the ground. It is important though to have some sort of firm surface underneath you. So it shouldn't be a bed, it should be the floor or a thin mat so that you can feel contact points between the spine and the ground. So when I talk about, about a neutral spine, I will also refer to that as a long spine. Now, what do I mean by neutral spine or long spine? When we are young and our joints are healthy and we have a really beautiful skeletal system, our spine has natural curvature to it that um, is set up or arranged in a way that the spacing between each vertebrae is maximal and optimal. As we get older, our movement patterns, our daily habits, that all shifts the shape of the spine and the spacing between the vertebrae. Our first goal here is going to be to try to bring the spine back to a more optimal shape or length by increasing the space between the vertebrae. That is what this video is going to be all about. Getting back to neutral or ideal or long spine position. So what is this long spine position? How does the ground help us get to it? When we're lying here on our back, we feel contact of some parts of our spine on the ground, whereas other parts of our spine are off the ground. Let's start with the bottom of our spine. That's our sacrum. Our sacrum is basically right here from the butt crack up to where you wear your pants. This part of your spine is five fused bones. They can't move independently of one another and it attaches to your pelvis on either side. This sacrum should be flat on the floor when you're lying on your back. If we move one section up from the sacrum, we come to your lumbar spine or low back. The lumbar spine runs from the waistband up to the bottom of the ribs, which for me is somewhere around this area, um, right kind of where a woman's bra strap would be. So this space right here, that's our lumbar spine lying on our back. That should be slightly arched off of the floor. It should not be excessive to where I can fit a whole hand under there. It should maybe be about a centimeter to an inch, a centimeter or two centimeters, um, where I can just slide a finger or two underneath there. Then our thoracic spine or the mid and upper back this is where a lot of people have problems because we should try to have this down on the floor. What I'll see a lot is an excessive rib flare, which means the bottom part of our thoracic spine is not on the floor and our lumbar is really curved off the floor. So we got to get these ribs down a little bit so that the opening of the bottom of my rib cage is pointed directly at that wall. I don't want to be flared up here. So you can find your bottom rib with your hands just by poking onto your side. It's pretty easy to feel the last bony structure there. And if you follow that along to your spine, you want that particular part down on the ground. Anything below that should be slightly arched off the ground until you get to your sacrum. 
Anything above that should be down to the ground until you get to your neck or cervical vertebrae. If you're having trouble getting your upper back down to the ground, you can raise your arms up to the ceiling like this and reach. That's gonna get your scapula out of the way so that you can get the vertebrae down to the ground. Reaching for the ceiling, that's called protraction. We'll get to that a little bit later on in some future videos. So back to our thoracic vertebrae, we have that down on the ground. Our lumbar vertebrae slightly off, our sacrum down on the ground. Let's move up to the final part, which is our neck. When a lot of people lie on the ground, their neck will have a tendency to arch high off the ground and their chin will be pointed up towards the ceiling. We do not want this. This is called cervical lordosis or hyperextension or just kind of looking upwards. We want to lengthen this, which means we are gonna take our chin, tilt it down, and tuck it backwards. This has now decreased the space between my neck and the floor. Another way to think about this is the little bony protuberance that everyone has in the back center of their head it's called the occipital protuberance. It almost feels like a little hook. If you put your hand in and scoop upward, it'll feel like it's got a little hook to it. Take that hook, pull on it lightly, place it down on the ground and think that you're hooking it into the ground. Now, if you go through the positions of your spine and you're still in the proper position with your sacrum down, lumbar off, thoracic down, chin tucked, you should already start to feel a stretch happening on the backside of your body, anywhere from your ears all the way down to mid-butt area. There should be some stretch sensation going on there. This should be a kind of a difficult position for some people to hold because their spine is stuck in more of a position like this. So the reason you're feeling a stretch sensation is like I said, we are elongating the spine or creating more space between the vertebrae so those intervertebral discs have more room to operate and less pressure on them. You're feeling a stretch because you have individual muscles between each vertebrae, really tiny ones, that are responsible for holding the space they take the tension of gravity, not the vertebrae just jamming on top of the one below, uh, below it. So the stretch that you're feeling, it is important to have this because it shows that you're creating space or length through your vertebrae. And you are now in a neutral or optimal or long spine position. Now it's easy to be in this position on your back on the floor because we have feedback from the floor, right? It's right up against our vertebrae. Our next step is we have to figure out what happens when we don't have the floor. How do we stabilize this position? And how do we start to feel that stretch sensation that signals to us that we're in this position? In order to do that, we have to start activating deep core musculature that is going to fight the power of gravity Gravity wants to bend us in different ways. This deep core musculature is gonna fight the power of gravity to help stabilize our vertebrae, our rib cage, and our pelvis in this position. So the first deep core muscle that we're gonna go over is called your transversus abdominals. It's also known as the corset muscle because it acts exactly like a corset does your transversus abdominals. It runs 360 degrees around your torso. All right, it connects all the way into the back, wraps around the sides, and then connects to the front to a bandage structure called the linea alba. That's um, the divot that you would see between uh, someone's six pack muscles. That's where your transversus abdominals connects to in front. 
The top part of the transversus abdominals connects to the bottom of your rib cage. So if you take your fingers and run along the bottom of your rib cage, you are touching the very top of your transversus abdominals all the way around until you get to the spine. The bottom of the transversus abdominals connects to the top of the pelvis. So if I go to my pubic bone, that is the very bottom of my transversus abdominals. I can feel where my pelvis starts to arch upward. That's the very top of my transversus abdominals all the way until I run around back and meet the uh, lumbar vertebrae. My transversus abdominals, it runs the whole 360 degrees around from pelvis to ribs. Again, think of it like a corset. If I pull the strings on the back of the corset or activate the corset, what does it do? It squeezes everything inward. So it's like you're taking a cylinder and making it smaller. That's what the transversus abdominis does. When you pull it in, it's going to squeeze all of your organs in tighter. It's going to bring your pelvis and ribs slightly closer together. And it's also going to resist any kind of movement of your ribs into like a, a bending or crunching position or your lumbar spine into this hyperflexion or even side bending positions. It will resist that when it's turned on. And that's how it creates the stability that we are going to try to achieve with our spine. So let's try activating our transversus abdominals. First, get to your neutral long spine position. Again, you know you're there because you feel some little stretch sensation through the vertebrae. Start breathing slowly. Try to breathe through the nose. I'm gonna be breathing through my mouth a little bit here so that I can still talk and so that you can hear some of my breathing. But for you, I want you to try to breathe through the nose silently and slowly with long, steady breaths. On your next exhale, you are going to pull your belly button inward or towards the center of your body. You can also think of it as towards the spine. You're not gonna do that by sucking it in air. You're gonna do that by thinking of making yourself thin or pulling in your gut. You're gonna do it very lightly at first until I instruct you to start doing it more and more. So here we go on our next exhale. I'm going to start to pull in my belly button. I'm thinking I'm trying to make myself look thinner. I should still be able to breathe. If you are still able to breathe and you're sure that you're pulling in your belly button, I want you to start ramping up the amount of energy that you're using to pull in the belly button and start to do it a little bit more. Now keep pulling in that belly button a little bit more. Think that you're moving just up 10%. So we're at 20% now of our maximal belly button pulling. Then let's go up to 30%. Every time that you ramp up this 10 percentage points, you still have to focus on breathing steadily and normally. That is because your diaphragm controls breathing. It's a separate muscle from your transversus abdominals. It should be able to function while your transversus abdominals functions and relax your transversus abdominals completely. Let's try this again, just the transversus abdominals and breathing. I'm gonna take you through zero activation. We're gonna ramp up to our 100% or maximal activation of belly button pull in. And then we're gonna slowly work our way back down. We're gonna do it in this ramping style of 10 percentage points at a time. How do you know you're at 10, 20, 30, 40, 50%? This will come with practice and you learning your body. Your 50% is different than my 50% is different than their 50% because we all have different levels of maximal strength. 
This is about communicating with your body and figuring out what those levels are. So be patient. It's okay if you don't fully grasp it the first day. The best advice I give you is to start off light and be targeted with what muscles you're activating because it's very easy to compensate. And our goal here is to get in touch with specific muscles so we have clearer lines of communication with our body. Here we go, let's do our transversus abdominals activation, starting from zero, ramping our way up to 100 and back down. First, take two deep breaths. On your second exhale, you are gonna slowly start to pull in the belly button and activate the transversus abdominals up to 10%. Inhale one more time. Exhale and slowly start to pull in that belly button up to 10%. Take another deep breath on the next exhale. You can ramp up to 20%. I'm pulling in a little bit more. Another deep breath goes by. Exhale, ramp up to 30%. Continue to follow that pattern up to 40%. Remember, no external movement of the pelvis and ribs should be happening. If you feel anything or anything at all, it should be a line of tension forming underneath the belly button. That's where it's easiest to feel the transversus abdominals. And if you're pulling that in, the more that you pull it in, the tighter that sensation should get. On your next exhale, we should be somewhere up around 70 to 80% of our maximal activation. Now we should be up where around 90 to 100%. Let's start working our way back down the ladder. Keep breathing, keep pulling in, but now we're relaxing the amount that we're pulling in. And we should feel that line under our belly button start to decrease in tension. And let's make our way down to 60 or 50% now. Remember, there should not be much external movement. Your ribs aren't moving around the floor, so the pressure points on the floor should have remained the same and not changed. Your pelvis isn't moving around the floor. This is about stability of those structures, not moving them. Next exhale, we should be down to about 20 to 10%, and then you can relax completely. So that activation of our transversus abdominals that we took from zero and incrementally raised up to 100 and then took it back down to zero, we are able to activate all of our muscles in our body in that fashion. Think about it. You're able to grab a very fragile teacup with your fingertips, but at the same time, you're also able to grab a hammer and squeeze it as you nail something in. So you can go at... 10% of your maximal grip or 100% of your maximal grip. You can do the same thing with your transversus abdominals. You just have to learn to control that. The final part that I wanted to mention about the transversus abdominals is why are you only feeling it in this one spot under your belly button? The answer lies in the fact that you are not uh, skilled enough yet to activate the whole thing. The way that you will activate the whole thing is just by visualizing the corset and as you're pulling in, think that I can pull in from here, I could pull in from these spots on my side, I could pull in from the top, I could pull in from more of the obliques or side area or even the back. Every part of it can be pulled in. So I describe that as spreading the activation. So not only can you ramp the activation, but you could also spread the activation. That is your transversus abdominis. The second and uh, final part of your deep core musculature that I want to go over today is your pelvic floor. When we talk about the pelvic floor, those are muscles that sit inside the bucket structure that is your pelvis. We're going to specifically talk about the muscles that you would hold if you had to take a pee. Those are the muscles that are going to help bring our pelvis closer together and stabilize the pelvis with the spine. 
We're not going to talk about holding the poop muscles because people get confused and start to clench their butt, their more superficial butt muscles, and I don't want that. So let's just focus on the pee hold muscles, and that's what we'll talk about with our pelvic floor. Start the same way, breathing deeply. On your second exhale, I want you to try to pull in the muscles that you would hold if you had to take a pee. Do it lightly, and if you did this properly, you should feel a line of tension right under your pubic bone. Start to ramp that up a little bit every breath that you take. We should still be breathing because remember our diaphragm is a separate muscle. Our pelvic floor can still pull in and tight by pulling in those P muscles and holding it tight and start ramping your way all the way up to 100 while breathing and slowly lowering yourself back down. That is the activation of your pelvic floor muscles or your P muscles. So now we know if we activate our transversus abdominis, that's going to create stability between the ribs and the pelvis. If we activate the pelvic floor muscles, that's going to create stability between the pelvis and the spine. That covers our whole deep core musculature and how to stabilize our spine in and around the lumbar area. Practice this. Also check out some of the other videos about the long spine drill and uh, pelvic floor and transversus abdominis to go further in depth explanations on how these muscles work. That's our deep core musculature and spinal stability.